Hi everyone, Miss Denton here, and welcome to a new lesson, a new unit. This whole unit is about right triangles, and what better way to start right triangles than to reviewing everything you already know about the Pythagorean theorem. Good old Pythagorean theorem, you've, you've studied it for several years now, and it's making its showing here in geometry, so let's get started. Okay. The Pythagorean theorem is going to be super duper duper important. So let's highlight this puppy. All right, the Pythagorean theorem states, if a triangle is a right triangle, boom, stop right there. You cannot do anything else unless you are looking at a right triangle when it comes to the Pythagorean theorem. You have to be dealing with a right triangle. So make sure that's the case first. So if a triangle is a right triangle, then the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Got all that? That's a little bit crazy. Let's see what that means. All right, so here's my right triangle. First things first, let's roll back and make sure you know what the difference between legs and hypotenuse are. These are vocab terms. On a right triangle, we call the side straight across from the right angle the hypotenuse super important that you can recognize the hypotenuse. Okay, The hypotenuse is straight across from this 90 degree angle. In fact, what we're going to do as we go through is we're probably going to highlight the hypotenuse every single time to make sure we can tell the difference. So there's your hypotenuse. Okay, The other two sides are called the legs. We've got two legs in each triangle. So we've got a hypotenuse and we've got legs. All right, so let's try reading that, that um, theorem one more time. The Pythagorean theorem states, if a triangle is a right triangle, this is a right triangle, so that part's good, then the sum, sum means to add, of the squares, that's that little exponent 2, of the legs, the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square, there's that little 2 again, of the hypotenuse. Okay, that's still kind of crazy. Let's write it out. It says the sum of squares of legs, so we've got leg and leg that's been squared that's added together. The sum of the squared legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So this is the hypotenuse on the right side, squared. So the two legs squared added together is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Whew, that's still a lot. No wonder no wonder Pythagoras narrowed this down. Instead of leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, he made this super easy to remember. He called the legs A and B. And he called the hypotenuse C. I go small, medium, large. A is my smallest leg. B is my medium leg. C is my longest piece, which is the hypotenuse. And he said, why don't we say this is A squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's so much easier to remember. So much easier to remember. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's something you already know. You've known it for years and years and years. It's just super duper important to remember that the hypotenuse is on the right side or is the single item, whereas the legs are added together. Okay? Oops, excuse me. All right, let's do some practice. Let's do some practice. I've got it set up this way so that we can make sure we know what we're solving for. So check out my examples here. First, it says, I am finding what? What are we trying to find in this picture? It's very important to notice whether we're trying to find a leg or a hypotenuse. So find that right angle straight across from that right angle is the very, very, very important side known as the hypotenuse. So in this example, 
we are trying to find the hypotenuse. We are given the legs and we're trying to solve for the hypotenuse. All right, so here's my theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We are trying to solve for the hypotenuse, so my X replaces the C. We are given the two legs. We are given A and B. They're both three. All right, so now let's turn our, our algebra skills on. Square first. Three times itself is nine. Nine plus nine is 18. And now we have to get x by itself here. Now, this is a big deal for a lot of students. They tend to forget a lot. We've seen this sign throughout the year. When we are trying to get rid of a square, we need to use its inverse. Its inverse is called a square root. A square root is the inverse. A square and a square root cancel each other out. So we have the x, the hypotenuse, is equal to the square root of 18. Now there might be two different ways that we need to answer this question. We may need to use what's called a simplified radical, which we've practiced this year. That's where we would start breaking down 18. 18 is 2 times 9, and 9 is 3 times 3, and here's our pair of 3's. So 3 on the outside, 2 on the inside. This would be the simplified radical. X equals 3 square root 2. We might also be lucky enough that we can just answer with a decimal. So I've got my calculator here to the side. The square root of 18, and I'm going to use these wavy equal signs because it's an estimate. The square root of 18 is about 4.24. So both of these are good answers. They're both solid answers. We just need to be prepared to answer in simple radical form or with a decimal that has been rounded. This is kind of a throwback to when we were working through the distance formula, so this is good time to practice that. Okay, let's try over here. Example two. First things first, what are you trying to find? This is a complicated picture. We've got two triangles that have been split with this altitude that's dropping down. And it split it right down the middle, four. So that'd be four and four. So I'm just going to look at one of these triangles. I think I'm just going to look at the triangle on the left. Highlight this one. I'm just going to look at this triangle too much to look at otherwise. The 90 degree angle of this triangle is straight across from the hypotenuse that's labeled as a nine. Hypotenuse is nine. So I am not trying to find the hypotenuse. I am not. The hypotenuse is nine. We already know that. I am trying to find a leg this time. I am trying to find a leg. So when I write out my Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the hypotenuse has already been discovered. It is 9, so I'm putting that in the hypotenuse spot. I'm trying to find one of these legs, and it does not matter which one we name a and b. I normally go small for a, medium for b, longest side for c, and just by the looks of this picture, it looks like x is a little bit longer than 4, but we don't know that until we get to solving. But it really doesn't matter. We can call a 4, and we can call b our x value. As far as the solving piece of it goes, it will not matter. All right, so let's get to solving. 4 times itself is 16. And 9 times 9 is 81. Now the solving here has an extra step to it. I need to get x by itself, but first I need to move over the 16. 
it's a positive 16, so I'm going to subtract it. 81, take away 16. Sixty-five, and now I'm right to where I was at the end of my first my first example here. I need to remove a square. The inverse of a square is called a square root. Square root. A square and a square root will eliminate each other. Okay, so x is going to be equal to whatever the square root of sixty-five is. Now, we're going to get our answer both ways. We're going to try a simplified radical. We're also going to get a decimal. So first, I want to try to break down 65. It ends in a 5, so I know I can divide by 5. 65 is 5 times 13, and both of these are prime numbers, so I can't break it down any further, which means there's no simplifying to do. This is my answer. x equals... The square root of 65 is the simplified radical. x equals the square root of 65. So that is my simplified radical answer. I can also get a decimal approximation. If I use my calculator, the square root of 65 is about 8.06. Remember, both are good answers, so I'm highlighting both of them. They're both good answers. It just depends on how the question phrases the answers. Is it asking for a simplified radical, or is it asking for a decimal? Okay, I'm going to start you on both of these next examples, but then I'm going to ask you to finish them and check your work. So let's take a peek. Example number three, let's discover what we're trying to find first. Okay, again, this is a complicated picture, so maybe you just want to outline the triangle so you know exactly what you're working on. Whatever helps you best. I'm a visual person, so as many colors and outlines as I can do, I try to do. The side that's straight across from the 90 degree angle, that is called the hypotenuse. That's a vocabulary term you got to know. So it looks like in this picture, the X is on the hypotenuse. I'm trying to solve for the hypotenuse, not a leg. I'm trying to solve for the hypotenuse. And that makes a big difference about how I'm going to set up this problem. Here's my Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And I am trying to solve for the hypotenuse. I'm trying to solve for C. The 16 and the 33, those are the two legs. It does not matter which one you list first. I normally just go small then medium. So here's my problem. I'm going to pause the video, take a minute, and solve for X. All right, let's see how you did. I've got my work over here if you need to see it. I got that x is equal to the square root of 1,345, which seems crazy. But I tried to break 1,345 down. I divided by 5 and got 269. And I divided and divided and divided and divided. And nothing divides into 269. It's a prime number. So there are no pairs to simplify this radical. So that is my final answer. My exact simplified radical is x is equal to the square root of 1,345. My approximate value, my rounded value, is 36.67. All right, let's try this very last example. In this last example on the front here, we've got another complicated picture. We're going to see this picture a lot when we start studying something called quadrilaterals. But right now, we're really focusing in on the triangle. So maybe, again, highlight the triangle so that you don't get overwhelmed by the rest of the picture. Okay. Identify the hypotenuse first. It's straight across from the 90-degree angle. The hypotenuse has already been measured. 
the hypotenuse is 28. So we are not finding the hypotenuse, which means we're going to try to find a leg. Trying to find a leg. All right, so over here in our Pythagorean theorem, we've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm going to pause the video because I want to see if you can set up this equation. So take a moment and try and figure out where all three pieces of this go, the 11, the x, and the 28. All right, before you start solving, check out my page here. We are solving for one of the legs. To me, the picture looks like 11 is going to be the short side. Of course, we won't know until we solve. So I've got 11 first, and then x, and then the 28. You can reverse the x and the 11, and you will still be able to solve correctly. All right, take a moment and solve for x. All right, let's check and see your work here. I got x is going to equal the square root of 663. Again, that's another really big number, so of course I tried to break it down with my factor tree, and I got 3, 13, and 17, so no pairs. It broke down, but no pairs, so I couldn't simplify this radical. The radical 663 is my final exact answer. The simplify, or the approximate answer, the rounded answer, is about 25.75. All right, so this is the, the bare bones basics of Pythagorean Theorem. I hope this was a good review. On the back of this page, let's flip over here. On the back of this page, we're going to be going a little bit deeper with it, something more advanced than maybe you've learned in the past. We're going to talk about um, how to use the what's called the converse of the Pythagorean Theorem, which really just means the reverse theorem to decide if the triangles are right triangles. So let's check that out. This is the converse. Okay, so the converse says, the reverse says, if you flip it around, if the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, okay? Now remember, all of that's really big for if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, okay, then you have a right triangle. So this would be handy if somebody has already measured the sides of a triangle and they are trying to determine if it is a right triangle. A right triangle. So remember, the Pythagorean theorem only works out if you have a right angle in the picture. So here I've got three different examples. I've already measured the three sides of a, of a triangle, and I am trying to decide, are these sides three lengths that form a right triangle? So here we are back to the Pythagorean theorem. If this theorem holds true, if this works, then it is a right triangle. All right, so remember, a squared, b squared, c squared. C is always the hypotenuse, so this is going to be your longest side. So when I'm looking at my measurements here, I might want to label A, B, and C before I put them in the theorem. C has to be the longest side. All right. Not sure what the square root of 12 is, but I know that the square root of 9 is 3, so 12 is bigger than 9, so I know that's going to be the biggest. All right, so I've labeled A, B, and C. So here's what I'm trying to discover. Is 3 squared plus 4 squared equal to 5 squared? That's the question. If the Pythagorean theorem holds true, then we do have a set of right sides that form a right triangle. So let's do this math here. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 9 and 16 make 25. Well, 5 times itself also makes 25. 
So this, these are equal. So therefore, yes, yes, yes. A three, four, five triangle is a right triangle. In fact, it's a very, very, very famous right triangle. A three, four, five is a very famous Pythagorean triangle. All right, let's check out 10, 15, and 20. Is 10 squared plus 15 squared equal to 20 squared? All right, might need a little more help in this one. Arithmetic here is a little tougher. Um, 10 squared is 100. 15 times itself is 225. So we've got 100. And we've got 225. And then 20 times itself is 400. So let's check that out. Is 100 plus 225 equal to 400? I can already tell. 100 and 225, that makes 325. That is not equal to 400. That's a big nope. These three sides might make a triangle, but they are not going to form a right triangle because they don't work. They don't fit into the Pythagorean theorem pattern. Okay. Got one more to try, and I know it's got some yucky square roots in here, but I picked it on purpose to make sure we remember something really cool about square roots. So let's plug this into the Pythagorean theorem. A squared, so 2 squared, plus B squared. So we've got the square root of 8 as B, and then that's what we're squaring. We're trying to ask, is that equal to 12 squared? Excuse me, the square root of 12 squared. So let's do this math here. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times itself. Okay. The square root of 8 times itself. Well, remember, guys, a square and a square root are inverses. They cancel each other out. So the square root of 8 times the square root of 8 is just 8. Same thing on this side. The square root of 12 times itself is an inverse property. They cancel each other out, so we just get 12. Is 4 plus 8 equal to 12? Yes, it is. So this is a set of side lengths that would form a right triangle. They fit into Pythagorean theorem. Even though they're funky little square roots, they still work. Okay. Alrighty, so make sure you can use the converse here. Next, another topic I want to make sure you, we upgrade to, this is beyond our, our middle school conversation, is something called a Pythagorean triple. A Pythagorean triple is something special. Okay. A Pythagorean theorem goes one step beyond just any numbers that form right triangles. Pythagorean triple is a set of whole numbers. A set of whole numbers that form, a set of whole numbers numbers, I guess I didn't have to write that there. A set of whole numbers that form a right triangle. A set of whole numbers, so that means no decimals, no fractions. They have to be whole numbers. So let's check out our first example. Let's, double, let's make sure it fits into this categorization first. Are 9, 12, and 15 whole numbers? Yes. So we got to check them. Do they work in the Pythagorean theorem? Do they form a right triangle? Is 9 squared plus 12 squared equal to 15 squared? Take a moment and decide. I hope you decided yes. I hope you decided yes. 9 squared is 81. 12 squared is 144. So add those up and you get 225, which is the hypotenuse value squared. So, yep, you got a, you've got a set of whole numbers that also form a right triangle. So these are called a Pythagorean triple. There's a vocab word for you. They're called a Pythagorean triple. All right, 
Let's check out 6, 8, and 9. First things first, check this half of the definition. Are they whole numbers? Yes, they are whole numbers. Now we need to see, do they form a right triangle, which means do they fit in the Pythagorean theorem? Is 6 squared plus 8 squared equal to 9 squared? That's the question. Take a moment and decide. Let's see what you said. 6 squared is 36, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, 36 and 64 added together make 100, and 100 is not equal to 81, so this is a big no. These are not a Pythagorean triple. They are whole numbers, but they do not form a right triangle, so they are not a Pythagorean triple. Final example for you. I'm going to let you decide all on your own. Take a moment and decide. Well, hopefully that one was super easy. In order to be a Pythagorean triple, you have to be working with whole numbers, no decimals. And here we've got 1.5, which boom, right away. That eliminates this from being a Pythagorean triple. They are not whole numbers, so they are not a Pythagorean triple. I didn't even check them in the Pythagorean theorem. They might form a great right triangle. If I put them into a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it, it I do believe actually I think it does work. However, they're not whole numbers, so it doesn't matter. They're not a Pythagorean triple. Okay, the very last set of practice I have for you are some word problems. And I know not everyone loves word problems, but you better be ready. Word problems are where it's at when we're talking about SOL and the Pythagorean theorem. So let's, let's do a couple here and see if we can reason through what these word problems are asking for of us. Number one, this is a classic, classic problem, all right? A ladder is leaning against the side of a building. The ladder is five feet away from the base of the building and touches the building at a height of 10 feet. How long is the ladder? Ooh, okay, now I am no artist, as you know, and I don't need to be. I need to be able to solve a right triangle because I know I'm working with Pythagorean theorem. So let's start there. Here's my building. I can draw some little windows and stuff if that helps you understand. There we go. There's my building. It's beautiful. Here's my ladder. Leaning on the side of the building. Here's the ground. Now, let's bring the math back into it here. It says a ladder is leaning against the side of the building. The ladder is five feet away from the building. There we go. There's the bottom of the ladder. There's the bottom of the building, five feet away. The ladder is five feet away from the building and it touches the building at a height of 10 feet. So way, way up here, that's 10 feet high. So this side is 10 feet long. How long is the ladder? There's my, there's my X. That's what I'm trying to know. All right, so what are we trying to find here? A leg or a hypotenuse? Well, hopefully I built this building at a perfect 90 degree angle or it's going to tip over. So straight across from the 90 degree angle is the hypotenuse. I'm always going to highlight that to help you out. The hypotenuse is across from the 90 degree angle. So I'm trying to solve for a hypotenuse. So we're back to a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We have a right triangle. And in this right triangle, we are trying to solve for the hypotenuse. 5 is a leg, and 10 is a leg. Take a moment, solve for x, and why don't you go ahead and just round to the nearest hundredth, which is two decimal places. Okie doke. Well, I've got that the ladder is 11.18 feet long. Check out my work. 5 squared is 25. 10 squared is 100. Add that together, that's 125. That is equal to x squared, so boom, there's my radical, square root. If I'm rounding, the square root of 125 is 11.18, and I put feet on that, because look, everything's measured in feet, 
So that's a 11.18 foot long ladder. There's our ladder. All right, let's try another example. Read through first, then we'll draw a picture, and then we'll solve. A plane flies north 136 miles to deliver supplies, and then it flies west 273 miles to deliver more supplies. Find the distance back to the airport, taking the most direct route. Ooh, okay. Well, first things first, let's make sure we know where north, south, east, and west are. A little compass over here. North, south, east, west. Now that's going to help me draw this picture. Okay, I'm going to start at the airport. Starting at the airport. I'm going to fly north 136 miles. I'm going up 136 miles. Then I fly west, west, 273 miles. Find the distance back from this place. Find the distance back to the airport. This was my airport. This is where I started. That is what I'm trying to find. So I went north first, 136 miles north, took a sharp left and went to the west, 273 miles. And now the question is, how much further back is it to the original airport? Make sure that picture makes sense to you. If it doesn't make sense, we really can't move forward. If you can't draw the picture, you can't go a little bit further with it, okay? All right, now I need to decide what I'm solving for. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I am solving for the distance back to the airport, which is across from the right angle in this picture, which makes that the hypotenuse. I'm solving for the hypotenuse again. So let's set up this equation. If I'm solving for the hypotenuse, the x squared goes on the right. The two legs are 273 and 136. Take a moment and solve for x. How'd you do? Let's take a look. I got 305 miles. These are some big numbers, so let's stick together here. 273 squared gives me 74,529. 136 squared gives me 18,496. You got to add those together for a total of 93,025, and then take the square root of that, which happens to be a perfect square 305. So we've got layers of work here, guys. We've got word problems that we have to turn into triangles. We've got triangles that we've got to plug into the Pythagorean theorem. We've got a Pythagorean theorem that we've got to use our algebra skills to, you, to solve. So you, this is a three-layer process. So this Pythagorean theorem that you've been practicing and practicing and practicing for several years is really getting much deeper now. So if you need help, come find me, okay? I got two more examples for you. Here we go. This is another pretty classic problem here, the flagpole problem. It says, the six foot flagpole cast a shadow nine feet long. What is the distance from the top of the pole to the end of the shadow? All right, let's get a little picture. Flagpole, there's my flag. Okay. It tells me that the flagpole is six feet tall. So this is a six foot flagpole. It's casting a shadow. Shadows are on the ground. So here's the shadow. The shadow is nine feet long. The question is, what is the distance from the top of the flagpole to the end of the shadow? That's the question. That's where the variable goes. Well, well, we've made another right triangle. That's right. Again, if my flagpole is, is well engineered, it's at a 90 degree angle, which means the X is on the hypotenuse again. 
Texas on the hypotenuse. Okay, I'm going to pause here. You take a moment, set everything up, and then solve for x. Let's see how this went for you. First stop on our check here is to make sure you've plugged in the variables in the right place. If we're looking for the hypotenuse, that x goes in the c position. A and B don't matter. I did 6 and then 9. If you did 9 for A and 6 for B, we should be good to go. 6 squared is 36. 9 squared is 81. Combine those two for 117. Take the square root of 117. I got 10.82 feet. All right, so again, we had to read, draw, write up a formula, solve our own formula. Lots of places to make little mistakes. All right, final question here. Final question. <clears throat> Read first. A 55-inch television screen is 26 inches tall. How wide is it? All right, well, I'm going to start with a television screen here. Here's my TV. TV is a rectangle. Now, I don't know if you know this or not. This is important to know before you go television shopping. When they say something is a 55-inch TV, they're being a little bit tricky here. They're measuring on the diagonal every single time. So when they say you're looking at a 55-inch television, they're saying the diagonal is 55 inches. I don't know if you knew that. Did you know that? Well, this particular TV is 26 inches tall. The question is, how wide is the TV? You might need to know that before you buy a TV stand to put it on, right? All right, so we've got this 55-inch TV, 26 inches tall. How wide is it? We've got our picture drawn up. I want you to take a minute, set up your equation, and then solve. All right, let's see how this one went. I got that the width of this television is 48.47 inches long. Now, if something went wrong, if you didn't get that, let's back up and make sure we figure out where the mistake is. We read it, we drew a picture. Based on this picture, the hypotenuse is 55. Remember, the hypotenuse is always, every single time, across from the 90 degree angle. So the hypotenuse is 55, which means the 55 goes on the right side of this equation. X and 26 are the two legs of the right triangle. So they go on the left side of the equation. I went with X squared as A and 26 as B, but of course you could reverse that. In order to solve for this X, I had to do a subtraction before I took the square root. And once I do that, I got 48.47 inches, since we're measuring in inches. Guys, thanks for sticking with me on this. We've done Pythagorean theorem for years and years, but it's really super important theorem moving forward. You're going to see it a lot as we prepare for our SOL. So, happy studying.